So we know that if a project has a positive net present value that we should accept that project because it's going to add wealth to the firm. But what if we have a mutually exclusive investment opportunity, something where we only really have one option. Like let's say we have a vacant lot. So here's our lot and let's say that we could build different types of buildings on this lot. We could build this type of building, we could build this type of building, or we could just sell the lot as it stands right now and just take the cash. So we've got these different investment opportunities. We could have three different investment opportunities that we could do with this lot, and we can't do all three of them, right? They're mutually exclusive. We can't build a commercial building here and at the same time just sell the lot as is with nothing built on it at all. So we can look at the different cash flows for each of these opportunities and say, okay, which is the best one? And ultimately what we're going to want to do is we're going to pick the one with the highest net present value. So I want to walk you through an example. So let's say, here, here's our example. So let's say that we have three choices of what to do with that lot. So here's our lot again. This is a vacant lot that we own and we, we take a look at the different cash flows that we could have and so here are our cash flows and it's over two years we'll say in, in year zero here's the cash flow that's up front right if we're making an investment or if we're selling the lot as is we're just going to get money up front right and we're not going to have any cash flows later so it's actually going to be positive if we sell as is but let's look at these these three options so we could build residential homes on this lot or we could have the property rezoned for commercial purposes, let's just assume, and then we could build a commercial building, like a shopping mall or something. And then we could just say, you know what, we're not going to build anything at all. We're just going to leave the lot vacant and just sell it as is. So when we look at these, these different opportunities, we've got, here's our, our stream of cash flows, and then we can look at our cost of capital, and, and our cost of capital might differ based on the project, right? So we might have cost capital 12% for building residential, but if we build commercial, we decide it's 9%. So we can go then and calculate a net present value for each of these different investment opportunities and compare them. And we again, we can't do all of these, right? We can't build a shopping mall and at the same time build a bunch of homes in the exact same spot. That's just not possible. So if we're going to go and calculate the net present value for each of these for the residential, we just have, what would that be, negative 300 minus 400 over 1.12 plus, and I don't know if you can see this, maybe I'll put it up here, plus 1100 over 1.12 squared. And the reason for that is, it, it, you could just take a look at my net present value video if, you, if this is hard for you to understand, but here's our negative cash flows in the first uh, it, up front and then in the first year and then the positive cash flow in year two when we go and sell right so we're basically saying over the first two years we're gonna have some negative cash flows and then we're gonna start we're gonna sell the homes in in year two so then and then we just apply our cost of capital of 12 percent to discount this back so the net present value ends up being 200 well let me change colors here let me we'll put that in yellow again to be consistent so that's 200 oh $220 net present value for building the residential homes. I'll put that in a box so you can see it. Now with the commercial, change colors again. So the commercial, we're going to have negative 750. That's, that's a, this is the investment we're making to build this building up front. And then in, in the first year, the cash flows are a little different than the residential. We get all the cash in year one. And we get the same amount, and we're going to have a different discount rate, though. And that's going to give us, what are we going to have here? We're going to have 259 for our net present value. And then selling as is, we're just getting cash up front, so we don't have to discount any cash flows in period one or two back to the present because there are no cash flows. We're just selling the property as it currently stands as a vacant lot. We don't even have to worry about the cost of capital. And so as is, is going to be a net present value of $175. Now, we can only do one of these projects. They all have a positive net present value, right? They're all going to add wealth to the firm. So what we're going to do is we want to pick the one with the highest net present value. So forget about anything else that's going on and just look at the net present value because that's telling you that this project, the build commercial, 
project has the uh, highest MPV at 259. That means that building commercial is going to add the most wealth to our firm.